hello beautiful people welcome to my channel or welcome back if you're a returning subscriber and if you are new here i'm so happy that you decided to click on this video today my name is janelle welcome 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 all right so as you can tell by the title this is going to be a work related job job a work related video I think I was gonna say work-related vlog, but it's, I don't really know what this is gonna turn out as because I've been trying to record this for the longest. Things just weren't working out. Like I would forget to record a day and then I didn't like what I was recording or I felt like it was boring. So at this point I was like, you know what? Sitting down, talking at home to give kind of like an overview of what's going on and hope for the best. That's what we're gonna roll with today. So I'm really hoping that this video comes out well. I started my new job on July 10th. So it's been about, a month and a half since i've started this new position and wow it's been amazing so far it's been definitely a transition for me considering my last career that i was in temporarily i was a flight attendant if you know you know but if this is the first time if you ever watched one of my videos i was a flight attendant prior to going into the role that i have now but a little bit of background i already have my master's in social work and i recently got my lmsw license in may of this year so i do have educational qualifications as well as a licensure qualifications to have the job that i have now as a medical social worker so that is my job title i am working at a pediatric hospital in texas now that i've been working in this role for over a month now i feel like i I'm more comfortable and more competent of what it is that I actually do at work because I had a general overview of what medical social work was obviously before I even started the job when I was doing my due diligence with researching just the um, industry and the general description of what I would be expected to do within the role but truth be told you really really don't learn the job until you're physically in it and I'm still learning things to this day. Every day that I go to work, I learn something new. I see something for the first time. I'm human and there's things that I just don't know and that's okay. It's just a learning process. To be honest, I probably won't be like super, super comfortable until probably like six months in because I think at the six month mark is a good baseline to feel like you are well equipped to do the expectations of the job my orientation within this role was six weeks so i got off an orientation was it last week i think it was last week yeah so that first six weeks i was doing shadowing lots of training and policy overview and procedure overview and just a lot a lot of shadowing and then i had like on week five instances where i was able to facilitate my own consultations which i will tell you what consultations are later in this video but basically i was facilitating these consultations on my own but i had a colleague in the room with me just to oversee what i was doing and to fill any gaps that i may have missed when i was meeting with the patient and their families so yeah i was starting to spread my wings to fly and now i'm officially off of orientation and seeing patients and families one-on-one -on -one by myself so that has been great to kind of see my progress within the last month and a half so what is medical social work Basically, medical social work is a subdivision of social work in a medical setting. So social workers that work in the field of medical social work can be employed in various facilities. So for example, the more probably common one maybe are hospitals, other um, facilities where you may be employed or see a medical social worker are long-term treatment facilities, outpatient clinics, nursing homes, psychiatric hospitals, or even some private healthcare providers may have different um, practices where they employ medical social workers to assist with their patients there. You can also see medical social workers in hospice facilities and like residential treatment centers as well. But those are just some that I notated. I'm pretty sure there's probably other facilities that you may see a medical social worker in as well. But those are just some examples. And again, where I am employed is at a pediatric hospital where I see primarily children. When I first started, I was working in the daytime because I was shadowing other social workers. My actual shift is an overnight social worker. So I work three days a week for 12 hour shifts. So I work Monday through Wednesday, 7 p.m. to 7.30 a.m. But it technically goes into Thursday morning because I get off at Thursday morning at 7.30 a.m. So I work a total of 36 hours a week. 
um but this past weekend i did pick up an extra ship on the weekend and then really this next upcoming month i'm gonna be picking up extra ships on the weekend as well to get some extra money in my pocket and so there's definitely a lot of instances and ways to make more money within this role so i really am appreciative of that but um yeah so i work nights i will not lie to you guys when i first started like i think week five is the first week that i did the overnight schedule and i was struggling okay but now it's not as bad like i feel like i've gotten to a nice routine sleep wise and i really like the night shift because it's just me and a few other social workers that are there compared to the daytime we're like fully staffed so at night it's quieter it's more chill and I really appreciate that. It's the nights are slower, but then there's some nights patient wise where it's a lot going on and things can get really busy because it is an emergency center. So things can, can come up that are very time consuming and you may get like a lot of patients back to back that are needing your services. For the most part, I could say it's pretty like chill as far as the flow of things and like noise levels within the office it's quiet so i really really like that medical social workers typically wear a lot of hats and it's a lot of things that we do of course i can only attest to medical social work in the hospital setting because that's where i'm currently employed this is my first time ever working in a hospital setting so i'm going to be speaking towards what i do there and as well as what my colleagues do within the social work department um it may not be the same across the board at every hospital or at every facility where medical social workers are employed at so just a idea of what medical social workers do we pretty much advocate for patients and their families in regards to different hardships that they may be facing in the hospital or at home so that can vary from psychosocial concerns an array of other hardships that may be related to the patient's health condition whether it's an acute condition or something that may be long-term where this child may be diagnosed with a long-term illness or have been battling with a certain health condition for an extended amount of time. So we pretty much are uh, a person within the hospital that can advocate for the family. We provide a lot of emotional support, advocacy, resources, referrals, and we also do assessments in the hospital as well. And some assessments that we conduct are, depending upon the reason that the child is in the hospital i'll do an overview of like what kind of assessments that we do so we do suicide assessments so a patient can be brought into the emergency center and oh before i get into that i want to tell you guys that the department that i work in in the hospital is the emergency center and that as well as the inpatient side of the hospital so the inpatient is basically patients that has been admitted to the hospital for an extended stay or extended amount of time it varies depending upon the patient their diagnosis and their plan of care and what needs to happen as far as their monitoring is concerned and in the emergency department i think that might be self-explanatory so that's pretty much where I cover in a hospital. So for assessments, typically what happens is a consultation will be put in. A consultation is pretty much the medical team will put in a request within our EPIC system that we utilize in the hospital, which is basically just our computer interface where we see all pertinent information regarding the patients. They'll put in a request for us to do a consultation to go meet with the patient and or their family to get information about their background and what brings them into the hospital or whatever specific need um, needs to be addressed for the family. So sometimes consultations can be submitted for patients that's already been in the hospital for a few days and a new concern or issue may arise where it will call for social work to assist. So sometimes we'll get a consultation for transportation needs or consultation because a patient may be not feeling well that day mentally and we'll like go and check in on them we can do consultations for a lot of different things but we're also mainly consulted to do assessments so this type of assessments that we will conduct in the hospital are behavioral health assessments suicide ideation slash suicide attempt assessments we'll do child maltreatment assessments and we will do psychosocial slash needs assessments so the psychosocial needs assessments is pretty much a broad overview of the family dynamics how things are going on at home just background history on the patient depending upon their age like where they go to school has there been any cps history law enforcement history history of domestic violence all the things assessments can be sometimes tough because it may come off as a little bit intrusive because we do ask a lot of questions regarding the family history and it's just for the purpose of us to get a better picture of 
what's going on at home and where we can meet the family and support them in any areas that they may need us. And then the, the assessments also kind of give us more information about circumstances around the family, which may be in some cases contributing to why that patient may be in the hospital. As far as the maltreatment assessments, those typically are conducted when there may be some alleged abuse, uh, physical abuse, sexual abuse, or neglect. So we'll go in and talk to the patient depending on their age or their caregiver or whoever has brought them in who has information. I have to then report it to the appropriate authorities, whether it's law enforcement and or CPS, which is Child Protective Services. We do a lot of collaborations with outside agencies, making reports, following up on reports. With all that being said, a lot of tasks require me to meet with the patient and the family right at the bedside, get information from them, but also just try and be emotional support advocate for the families as well because there's in some cases the families are meeting with so many different professionals within the hospital setting and the reality is that sometimes there are instances where everyone may not be on the same page with certain things so social work can be like the middle person to kind of advocate for the family or find ways to relay certain information so that the medical team and the family can be on the same page but there are instances where they're not on the same page and you do your best to try and mitigate any inconsistencies or any issues but sometimes things don't always work out that way and that patients do not agree with what medical team is suggesting and there's instances where families leave against medical advisement and post work is required to make reports to CPS about that and yeah we do a lot of stuff. As far as suicide assessments, we pretty much meet with patients who are having suicidal ideations, who are thinking about harming themselves, or maybe even homicidal ideation, which means that they may be thinking of harming other individuals. So we go in and we do a thorough assessment about their mental health history, presenting symptoms, and then depending upon the severity of the um, reasons why they're there, we'll safety plan with them, and then some patients may be recommended for inpatient hospitalization, which will involve the patient staying in our hospital until they can be transferred to a mental health facility for continuation of care. And pretty much once we complete our assessments, the next task is basically to consult with the medical doctor or the medical team who is assigned to that patient and um, let them know what I found in my assessment. If it's a patient that is getting a suicide assessment, once I complete my assessment and I talk to the medical team, they want to pretty much know what my clinical uh, judgment is in regards to whether or not the child is in danger of harming themselves or others and if I would suggest that the patient would benefit from inpatient treatment and then the medical doctor will you know do their thing and then they'll decide ultimately whether or not the child should be discharged or the child should be recommended for psychiatric inpatient services. In my position I don't make any final decisions on the care that a patient needs. The doctor makes a final decision they definitely most of the time appreciate what we what we say what we observe in our assessment and take our consensus into consideration for sure there are times where the doctor will think something totally different and that's okay all I can do is document what I seen and heard when meeting with the patient and go from there we do deal with child death in the hospital. Literally just this week, I had my first experience of assisting a family with their loss, being around the medical staff while they were attempting to revive the child. It was definitely challenging for me to be very honest because it was my first time ever witnessing something like that. And when I say witnessing, I'm literally saying that I'm in the hospital patient room, visualizing the efforts to revive the child. If you can only imagine how graphic that is and um, emotionally challenging it is to see that, but still be present and professional and be there to support the families who are grieving a lot of times in crisis and you know to be honest i'm human right so it was my first time ever witnessing that and being around um, heightened emotions in that capacity to where when i when i first was like addressing it I, I froze a little bit but then as soon as i saw the mom come in the room i went into action and did my best to be supportive for her and navigate her through different tasks that needed to be addressed regarding the reason that she was there that night i think once i went home uh that's when things hit me 
and I had time to like process it and really think about it. And um, I think over time, I'll be more well equipped to do what needs to be done when situations like that arise in the hospital. Of course, you know, it's something that you don't want to happen, but it's something that I have to tell myself that it's gonna happen, it's things that I'm gonna see and things I'm gonna experience. So I feel as though as time progresses, I'm gonna become more and more well equipped with different ways to navigate that. It's very, very challenging emotionally sometimes, but there's a job that needs to be done at the end of the day. And I am just so grateful for the opportunity to be a support for families in need. And this job has definitely been eye-opening, even though I haven't been there that long. And it's very fast paced. And I really enjoy that a lot about this position because I just hate sitting at the desk all day. Redundancy, of course, don't get me wrong, some tasks are going to be redundant as far as like different formalities, but when you are meeting with new people every day, there's a new story, there are new things that you learn just about being human and helping others navigate challenges can be very rewarding. Where I work is a this place that provides a lot of support and encouragement and I feel like it's a job that's definitely going to push me to develop into a amazing social worker professionally but I think more importantly it's going to push me to be a better individual just through the day to day because all the things that I see and learn about just human life. I really love working in the hospital because you get to see so many different things. You get to learn so much, especially on the medical side of the hospital and just learning new medical terminology, learning more about physical conditions and different diagnosis that I didn't even know existed. And it really just opened my eyes to so much. And I've only been there for a month and a half, but Man, I've been exposed to a lot and I just know that I'm gonna learn more and more things through this role and definitely making me just more well-rounded as it relates to the different things that people face out in the world every day. Especially love working with children. That has always been near and dear to my heart. This is my first time dealing with children who are dealing with physical or mental conditions in this capacity. That the patients are humans and individuals first and they are not defined by their conditions or why they're in the hospital. So I still, you know, treat them as people first. This job just definitely requires you to be empathetic patient, the ability to work in fast-paced settings, collaborative, flexible, just really care about the welfare of children and just people in general, honestly. You interact with different people all the time from different cultural backgrounds, um, different economic backgrounds, and so many factors that you know make people who they are. And so you have to be very willing to deal with people in their many facets and still have the expectation to perform and do your job and provide great service. That's pretty much an overview of what I do, what my job entails, and I really hope that you guys learned something new from watching this video. It encourages you to um, look into medical social work if you're clicking on this video to get some insight on whether or not this is a job track that you want to pursue, or if you're just watching this video because you wanna get caught up on my life and see what I'm doing now as far as work now that I'm no longer a flight attendant. I hope that this was insightful for you as well. Well, if there's anything that you want me to elaborate more on, please let me know in the comment section. If you have any questions about anything that I have pretty much shared in this video, please let me know because I want to make sure that you guys are understanding what it is I'm talking about. So if y'all are wanting to see like work vlogs, let me know. Just bear in mind that I will not be able to record a lot of the things inside of the hospital that really showcases the meat of my job because of the nature of my job and where I'm working and HIPAA laws and just patient and family privacy. And yeah, it's just like I can't go in to the room when I'm seeing the patient in the hospital and record our conversation or record actually what goes on in the room because of all those things I just stated. So keep that in mind, but I can definitely probably like come on camera and talk to you very briefly and vaguely about the different types of consultations I did for the day the challenges that came up and how I navigated them as well as just giving you a consensus of how I believe the day went. Major takeaways, things that I learned that were new, just different tips and tools to equip you on your journey of becoming a social worker or tips just in general about 
working in the medical slash social work profession or if you have no desire to be a social worker but you're just curious of like what it is that I do at work and wanted to see more of it because it's interesting let me know as well thank you so much for watching I'll be looking forward to seeing y'all in my next upload sending you lots of love and light peace and blessings